All right. Guys, thank you for joining us tonight on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, I want to thank uh, KSB Community Wellness for hosting these educational programs. They do about three to four a month, so please be sure to tune in on them. Uh, follow our Facebook page uh, to see when those are happening. My name is Akhil Khan. I oversee our telehealth operations here at KSB Hospital. And tonight we're going to be talking about our 24-7 urgent care uh, platform. Uh, feel free to leave any comments. I'll do my best to answer them live, and we'll follow up to any comments left uh, after the recording with answers. So when we're looking at telehealth, I want to paint a few scenarios to kind of help us understand when this would be appropriate. So uh, oftentimes we uh, wake up in the middle of the night and we have uh, ear pain, maybe a severe headache, and we wonder to ourselves, do I go to the ED? Or it's six, seven o'clock in the morning, we're waking up the kids and they've got a stomach ache or they're running a fever, ear pain, and we're wondering, well, do I take them to urgent care? You know, what do I do? The office isn't open yet. Um, you know, more, more so late with COVID around here, we're at work, starting to not feel well, feeling like we're coming down with something. And we're not sure, do I go home or do I continue going to work? Um, and these are scenarios we encounter every day often. And so what if I told you that you could get a response to these questions from a KSB clinician within 15 to 30 minutes? I'm feeling a lot of nods on the other ends. I'm also feeling a lot of people saying, well, how can this be possible? And I'll tell you that this is going to be possible through telehealth. So then the next question is, is what is telehealth? Uh, a simple one sentence definition is it's the use of a telecommunication system such as your phone, tablet, laptop to provide medical services for the purposes of evaluation and treatment. And if that definition is a little tough to make it easier, it's using the internet to get answers for your healthcare needs. And I'm not talking about using Google or WebMD, which oftentimes when we Google our symptoms, we feel like we're about to die. I'm talking about entering in your actual symptoms and getting a response from a KSB clinician, either a doctor, nurse practitioner, physician assistant at in real time. And so how do we use this? So we visit the KSB Hospital website, and I want to give a shout out to our marketing team who, through COVID, has made the KSB website a one-stop shop for all of your healthcare questions, needs, and education. Here you can notice the COVID hub. Um, but what we're going to focus on today is our virtual care link here in the upper right-hand corner. So if I click on the virtual care link, I'm going to come to our KSB Telehealth, or it's also known as Telemedicine landing page. And here is where you can get uh, telehealth at your fingertips. And we've got three main tools. We've got our KSB Care Anywhere, which is available 24-7, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And a little bit of teaser for the upcoming episodes in the series is our, our primary and specialty care visit, visits, which are available by appointment. And the last part of the series, we'll be talking about some of our behavioral health uh, platforms and how those work. But tonight, we're going to jump into our 24-7 platform. And we call this one KSB Care Anywhere. And the model for KSB Care Anywhere is right care, right place, right time. And through this platform, we'll be able to determine what the right care is. The right place is wherever you're at. So right now at home or if you're at work or wherever that might be. And then the right time is right when you need it. And again, this is available 24-7. So how does it work? Well, you're going to complete an online health interview, and I like to call this the smart interview. And depending on the interview, they take anywhere from five to 15 minutes. A, a clinician will then get notified of, that you are uh, sent in a visit. They'll review your response. And between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., our clinicians respond within one hour. But it's typically closer to 10 to 15 minutes. And if needed, a prescription will be available, and you can send that to the pharmacy within a few minutes, and you're on your way. And so what conditions can we use this for? And so some of the most common conditions that we can use our KSB Care Anywhere platform for are your common colds, sinus infections, flus, UTI, pink eye, cold sore, styes, any minor burns, um, any back pain, insect bites, uh, possible exposures to STDs, 
Uh, many skin conditions like eczema, ear pain, heartburn, acid reflux, other GI conditions, all these common conditions can be treated via KSB Care Anywhere. So let's check it out. Creating an account is really easy if you haven't already. You will, all you need is your name, sex, date of birth, address, phone number, and email. Once you're in, you got, you're ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to go ahead and log in my account, and we're going to get started, and we'll demo a visit over here. And what we're going to actually demo is something that we're all feeling very much today, which is COVID concern, right? Um, we're not really sure, is it COVID? Is, is it something else viral? Is it the flu? And this platform can help you get that advice. So when you log in, you're going to see the patient selection screen. Over here, I have myself, and I also have my daughter, my dependent. Now, keep in mind, to create an account, you do have to be 18 years or older. So if I needed to create that account for my daughter who say that she um, you know, is in that scenario where she woke up early in the morning and wasn't feeling well, I wasn't sure if I should send her to school or keep her home, I could go ahead and begin the visit on her behalf. But I'm going to go ahead and jump in underneath myself. We're going to start a visit. And what I want to note is that you need to be located in the state of Illinois to do a visit. And that is because these are KSB providers who are providing the care and reviewing the visits. And so their medical licenses are in Illinois. So therefore, if you're outside of Illinois, you, it's the platform is not suitable. And in ensuring we provide the right care for you, we want to make sure that we are not treating you if you have other serious health problems that may uh, need to be looked at by a clinician in person. So that might be any type of lung diseases or any immune disorders. If you had surg surgery recently, all these might preclude you from using telehealth. For the purposes of this interview, I will go ahead and say that we don't have a serious health problem. And if you remember those tiles we just went through earlier, over here I can go ahead and look at the reason for visits. If I was coming for a cold sore or if I was coming for um, you know, eczema or athlete's foot, we'll be able to go ahead and click this. But I want to actually go ahead and look at um, what we're all experiencing today, oftentimes, unfortunately, is coronavirus concern. And over here, you're going to notice that there is a screening. Uh, KSB Care Anywhere has a free seven question screener that can help determine your risk level from low risk to contact exposure to if you're symptomatic, high risk, and that's where it would recommend you complete the assessment. Now, the screening is free, but if you do get prompted to do an assessment, that's where there may be a charge apply. And I'll talk about where and when the charge might apply. So we're going to jump into what would be a coronavirus visit. So we... Um, I was actually playing around with this earlier. So it's saying that I started a visit within the last 24 hours and it's asking why, I, why I'm why i coming back so soon. Over there, I just put it's not applicable for the purposes of this uh, recording. Now, when did your symptoms start? You're going to notice that these questions are very similar, if not exactly the same, as to what a clinician would ask you if you came in person. Now, I'm going to go ahead and answer that I have a stuffy nose. I don't have a runny nose. I have a cough, but no sore throat. Now, keep in mind the questions I answered yes to, because this smart questionnaire is then going to follow up on, the, on that stuffy nose. It's also going to follow up and ask me questions about that cough. If I said no to cough, it wouldn't ask these questions and it would continue forward. And this is kind of the clinical decision tree that the survey goes through, and it's constantly evaluating your responses to determine, is this a more serious condition to where then it would send you to emergency care? But 60 to 80% of the cases that come through our doors are able to be handled by the platform. And so it's asking me more questions about the cough. Now it's going to ask me additional questions about um, these symptoms, aches and chills. If I say that I'm feeling feverish, it'll ask if I can take my temperature. If I have a thermometer nearby, I can say yes. It would ask me to then enter my temperature. And this survey is going to continue to go on and ask more questions about breathing, headache, nausea, ear pain. Um, over here would be an example of a red flag question. If I were to answer this question, yes, I have difficulty breathing even when resting, that would indicate a more serious condition and the system would stop you and help direct you to the nearest urgent care or emergency care platform. But here I'm going to say, no, I have no difficulty breathing. And it continues to ask more questions about symptoms, much like a physician, nurse practitioner, PA would ask you in person. 
Now, it's important to note that all these questions are been validated by the American Academy of Family Medicine as well as the American Academy of Pediatric Medicine. So these are all rooted in science um, and, and they are the best, most strategically placed questions given your previous responses. And so to save some time, I'm gonna jump ahead. I do wanna note that towards the end of this interview, it'll ask me questions about any allergies or medications that I'm taking. And this is to ensure that we're not gonna prescribe you anything potentially that might have a negative effect. And that's done through communication with a very large pharmacy database. It's also gonna ask me my weight so that we do proper dosing. It's also gonna look at uh, any free text or any other items I wanna let the clinician know. So I'm actually gonna jump ahead and we're gonna pretend that I've completed this visit. A clinician now has gotten pinged that I'm in the queue. They'll review my responses, see my demographic information. They'll be able to select the diagnosis. They'll be able to provide any medication. I can even request a school or work note should I need one. And so now we're gonna pop over and we're gonna look at what it looks like once the clinician has completed the visit. So once they have completed the visit, I'm gonna then get notified that I've got a visit response available. Now keep in mind, if I was there in the middle of the night answering that question, I can complete the survey and go back to sleep. If it's the morning, I could complete the survey and then go back to making breakfast. Or if it's at that lunchtime, I could complete the survey and go back to having lunch. And again, our response time is typically 10 to 15 minutes. And then you'll get notified that you have a clinician response available. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what my treatment plan is. Now, based off of the responses, the provider thought that I have acute bacterial sinusitis. It'll, it'll go a very detailed note about exactly what that means, what I need to keep in mind if symptoms worsen. Over here, we see the uh, doctors prescribed azithromycin as well as a nasal spray. We have instructions on self-care, when to seek care. And over here, I can now see that I can fill the prescription. So directly from the platform, I am able to log in and then select a pharmacy of my choice. Now I'm in the training environment right now, so all the Dixon pharmacies aren't located, aren't loaded in here. But if they, you know, if we were in the live environment, your Snyder, your Walgreens, your Walmart pharmacy would all be available over here. Let's say I was doing this visit in Chicago or down in Southern Illinois. Using my geolocation, it would show me the nearest pharmacies and I'd be able to select those to send my response. Now, when the provider's reviewing my survey, sometimes they may want to ask me some additional follow-up questions. That's when a provider may ask to do a phone call or maybe even a live video chat, all of which would be fostered directly through this system. Um, and then so I'd select my pharmacy and send it on its way. And that is all done in a matter of minutes. And to give you an example, our very first visit on this platform, from the time the patient started the visit, from the time that they sent their prescription to the pharmacy, it was a total of 22 minutes. So you can see using this platform, you can engage in the care, go about your day, a provider will review it, give it a response. You can send it to a pharmacy of your choice. Now, if you have a completed visit and you were diagnosed, you would be charged a fee of $35. If the provider was reviewing your response and thought that you need to be seen in person at a physician's office or maybe be seen by an emergency department or if even during the interview the system decided that it's not appropriate for telehealth and you were re referred to the next step of care you would not be charged that that 35 dollars and so that is how the payment system works many insurances do accept telehealth you would get a receipt to your email after the visit and you could submit that receipt to your insurance provider for them to reimburse the cost should your health plan cover it that is KSB Care Anywhere, 24-7 Urgent Care. I want to thank everyone for joining today. Um, I will follow up to any questions that are posted uh, after this presentation. There's also going to be an evaluation posted in the comments section. So please let us know what you thought about the presentation and what future topics you would like to hear about. Uh, and we will be having a monthly drawing for those who fill out the evaluation. So I hope you do so. Um, I hope everyone has a good night. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.